Good afternoon, Lisbon. I want to start with some audience participation. So those of you visiting Lisbon, please raise your hands if you're staying in a hotel. Okay, hands down. Please raise your hands if you're staying in a home, an apartment or a, a house. Great. You're early adopters. There's 20 million hotel rooms in the world today. In a couple of years' time, there will be 10 million homes for rent. So around a third of all trips, family trips, short breaks, and business trips will be in a home rather than a hotel. Hostmaker's job is helping that trend go mainstream, providing hotel quality services to the homestay sector, raising the bar of consistency while also ensuring we're authentic every step of the way. So how do we do this? Well, the first thing is thoughtful design and exceptional maintenance. So we've built in-house interior design teams as well as freelancer networks. So we can take any home and we can raise it to a hotel quality standard. Um, and then we continue to maintain in a relatively high wear and tear industry. Absolutely critical that there's someone in there every week, every couple of weeks, checking up on quality. Secondly is flexible lettings. So not everyone wants a guest in their house every single week. So we match our demand channels uh, to that, what, what the supply needs. If you're an institutional investor, we can put in digital nomads for three months, visiting expatriates or master's students for six months. But it's capturing that peak season demand on Airbnb, Booking.com, or Expedia that enables us to unlock more value for hosts and create a great platform for guests from around the world. And then lastly is hotel level service. So the big challenge to the homestay sector right now is inconsistency. I'm sure this week many of you are having great stays, many of you are having mediocre stays, many of you are having some pretty poor stays. Our job is to be the leading company, ensuring everyone has an amazing stay. So let me tell you a little bit about our journey. Uh, we started with one person and one home. We're now 2,000 homes and around 500 people. We do around 6,000 stays in nine cities every month. The secret to that has been balancing incredibly high quality service to build trust and referrals with technology to help rapid scaling underneath. And that's my recommendation to everyone is, is managing that. And the last thing I would say in terms of what next is use partners. The biggest thing that we've done is build legitimacy as a small company through f finding pioneering partners looking at our space. So we're the only partner with Marriott, the biggest hotel company in the world, able to book um, Marriott homes in cities like Lisbon, London, Rome, and Paris. And on the supply side, unlocking institutional growth, landlords being an alternative to residential long let with pioneers like BNP. So we'd love to discuss anyone building partnerships in hospitality and prop tech. We're Series B funded and looking for Series C. Thank you for listening. This next company is filling in the blanks on the map of the world. Mapillary crowdsources images to create a digital map. Please welcome to the stage founder and CEO, Jan Eric Solom. Hi, everyone. People are doing crazy things when they're building maps today. And I'm here to tell you that that is all changing right now. And so creating, updating, and fixing maps is uh, very slow and very expensive, primarily for two reasons. The first is um, data is being collected in an unscalable way. The second is um, that the making sense of the data is done manually. So um, one of the main fundamental pieces of data is street level imagery. So this video, shows what you can do, what we do, with images captured from a smartphone mounted as a dash cam in a car. So if you open up data collection for mapping, 
to any device, you need a pretty deep tech stack to make sense and connect that imagery. So we label all the pixels in these images. We recognize objects. We recognize the drivable lanes. Uh, we position all of this uh, with high accuracy. And then what we do is we publish this as map data for anyone to use. So behind the scenes, we build 3D models like this of every place where people take pictures. And then inside of those models, we can accurately pinpoint and position these different objects. And um, so we're, we're coming into mapping, and we're adding scale and speed to it. And you've probably seen images or maybe even these type of mapping vans themselves um, from some of the major mapping companies operating in your cities. And <clears throat> the problem is that these vans are super expensive, and um, you can't have enough of them. So a large fleet today consists of about 100, a few hundred vans. Um, if you add something like smartphones, there are about 2 billion smartphones in the world today. Um, and all of them have cameras. They have GPS. They have other sensors. They have local compute power. What's also happening is in the next couple of years, we're going to take the billion cars on the roads in the world and add more and more sensors to them. So as we transition towards uh, autonomy in, um, in the automotive space, we're going to have more and more cameras and more and more local compute power. And so this is what it looks like a few years into the journey. Uh, if you go to our website or any of the third-party integrations, you'll see about 34 billion map features that have been detected in imagery, about 400 million images to date, all over the world. We're in every country. Um, and so this data is available. The imagery is available. And we provide it neutrally to all mapping platforms and automotive companies in the world. So the future consists of many, many uncoordinated data captures, and we're the platform behind the scenes making it possible. Thank you. Now we have FAIR, transforming the nature of car ownership. FAIR are disrupting the auto industry. Here to tell us more is Scott Painter, CEO and founder. Hello, Web Summit. So I'm a father of four and a serial entrepreneur. And over the last 25 years, I've spent my career focusing on how to make buying and owning a car better, leveraging technology. I've had two public companies. I've incorporated 50 businesses. The company that I'm here to talk about today, FAIR, is transforming how we all get access to a car by making it synonymous with modern life and everything else that we do on our phones, whether it's our movies, our music, our content, our cell phone usage, everything about what we've built happens on your phone. I'm gonna tell you about FAIR through the journey of my son. 16-year-old Luke just got his driver's license, and in the US, when you're turned 16, this is a very big deal. The two things you need to make FAIR work are you need a valid driver's license and you need a bank account. So in addition to getting his driver's license, he went out and he got his bank account and he got his all, Everything's set up, he downloads the app, he scans his driver's license, we instantly know that he's got a valid US driver's license. He then links his bank account. He's instantly shopping for cars in the app. These are all pre-owned vehicles that are for sale at local dealers, they're not in our inventory. Everything is presented with monthly payments. Every car comes with a warranty, roadside assistance, and standard maintenance all included, so he doesn't have to worry about the fact that he's buying a used car, he can proceed with confidence. Everything in the app is adjusted to his budget because he linked his bank account, and we can see what he can afford on a monthly basis. Once he selects a car, we simultaneously pay the dealer for that vehicle. It becomes our vehicle, and then he enters into a usage agreement with us to use that car. He signs everything on his phone. There's no offline negotiation. There's no wet signatures required, and the best part is when Luke is ready to go off to college, he can turn his car in because there's no long-term commitment, there's no contract that's gonna keep him in that car. He can then go to college, pick a different car. He picked a Dodge Challenger. My wife and I did not necessarily think that was the car that he was gonna pick. Hopefully when he goes to college, he gets something a little bit more practical, but that's his choice. 
and his option. We're not a traditional startup. We're two years into this. We've raised over a half a billion dollars of equity capital, and that unlocks for us nearly three plus billion dollars of debt. When we buy those cars, they go on our balance sheet. We're 350 people. We're based in Southern California, Santa Monica, with offices in Phoenix. We've made a number of acquisitions, including Uber's exchange leasing business. And one of the big problems with the rideshare community is about half of the drivers can't even qualify for a car loan. The big idea at FAIR is that we're not lending consumers money. We're actually giving them access to a vehicle without the need to go into debt. Everything is a payments business, not a credit business. So I'm going to leave you with a short video about FAIR. You know what, imagine that the video is playing and it's amazing. Um, but you can all look up the app and you can see what we're talking about. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Clark. Clark is reshaping the nature of customer-centric insurance from the headquarters in Frankfurt. Please welcome CEO Christopher Oster. Hi everyone, Clark is an insurance manager. With our team, we have created a platform where consumers can do everything that is of relevance with regard to their personal insurance. That means people on our platform can buy insurance, manage insurance, improve their contracts, upgrade their coverage, speak with an expert, file claims, everything that is relevant to you as a consumer. Why do we think this is important? Because insurance has been an industry that didn't digitize so far. And we're actually talking about a massive market here. We're talking about millions of consumers, trillions in premiums, 85% offline, and a customer satisfaction of 30%. And this is why we have founded Clark in the first place. So what do we precisely do, and what does it look like? At the core of everything is the consumer, obviously. And what we provide to him is a digital wallet where he can see all of his insurance contracts and imagine this like the paper folder that all of you probably have at home that stores the information about your insurance contracts, but in a digital format. This is interesting because you can see pricing, what is covered, what not, how long the contract runs, when it's being canceled. And we make use of all this data and provide recommendations to the consumers. So we can tell, based on this data, every customer whether we think he should actually keep the contract he has or switch to better coverage. In case the customer follows our recommendation and actually switches his contract, we source information from over 160 carriers, curate the content that we get, and make the three best proposals to our users. Of course, there are sometimes situations where you as consumer might want to speak with an expert. And we also have a solution for that case. We're employing certified, qualified insurance consultants that help in every situation. So what makes all of this actually interesting and unique. Um, this has been the development of Clark over the last two years. And um, we have grown our customer base by a factor of 60, deploying all sorts of advertising channels, TV marketing, digital marketing, partnership marketing, everything you can imagine. What's really interesting and in making Clark unique is that while we have increased the customer base by a factor of 60, the team working with those customers only has doubled. So it means that we managed to make the insurance agents that we have 30 times more efficient over the last two, two years. And how we did that is that we have developed a robo-advisor technology. And we have hired the best insurance talent we could find. And we confronted these people with insurance situations of our customers and had them solve all these cases. And once they solved all the cases for our customers, we had them train our machine. And this way, we today are able to advise insurance customers with quality insurance products at scale. And this is actually where we want to go with Clark. Thank you so much. This next founder is joining us from a headquarters in Stockholm, Sweden. CEO Jonas Telander is from Storytel. 
Storytel is an audiobook streaming service that brings high quality stories to you wherever you are. Hello, uh, my name is Jonas Tellander. Uh, behind me, you're supposed to see some uh, numbers on what Storytel is doing. Basically, we're streaming audiobook service um, where you, well, think Spotify, think Netflix, monthly fee, and you listen as much as you like to stories. So uh, we have uh, 800,000 subscribers soon. They listen to 200 million hours of audio this year. And 200 million hours is uh, a pretty big thing, I think. Uh, we have 100 million uh, euros turnover this year and growing at about 40%. So um, 15 years ago, I walked on a plane from New York to somewhere in Europe. Uh, and with me on the plane, I had an iPod, uh, my first iPod, and I charged it with one audiobook, The King of Torch by John Grisham. And after the eight hour flight, uh, I actually had finished the entire audiobook. So I was pretty amazed that you can actually spend eight hours on a flight and just listen to one story. So that made me think, you know, what do I want to do with my life? And I ended up with the uh, three options, basically. One, to quit my job, uh, two, to start up a company, and three, to try to revitalize the audiobook market. Um, it took a lot longer than I'd, I'd expected, I would say, but fundamentally, I mean, listening to stories is something that people have done since the beginning of times. So at least since the beginning of, of the language, you know, sitting around the campfire listening to a story, that's not something you need to educate someone about how to do. It's just something you basically do. You listen to a story. If the story is compelling enough, you keep listening. Otherwise, you kind of zoom out, like you guys here on the first row. Um, so basically, five years down the road in 2010, um, we still hadn't quite found you know, our customer. And I think the reason was that we had to wait for a couple of revolutions to happen. So the first one was, of course, the smartphone. We started off in a, an era where you actually had keypads and you didn't really use the internet on your phone. Uh, so it was kind of an uphill battle. Uh, but then came the smartphone. And thank you, Apple. Thank you, Google. It all kind of played out well for a lot of us here today. And then we had another phenomenon that happened on the Swedish market, where I'm from, which is basically that Spotify launched and started to educate people that it is actually possible to pay for digital content, which was kind of unheard of in the Pirate Bay era. So that kind of helped us to start uh, growing the business and become uh, what we are today. So in parallel with this growth, uh, we realized quite early on that you know, the service is not going to be better than the stories that you have on the service. And the book market at the time kind of underserved the audiobooks. You didn't produce audiobooks out of most titles that you published. Uh, that has now dramatically changed. So take the Swedish market as an example. It's been a book market that's been on a steady decline for 15 years. And now with the audiobook you know, starting to grow, you can actually see an overall growth on the book market. So then you may ask yourself, uh, how is this possible? Well, I think it's because basically you, you get more time from listening to books. You have time to listen in your car. You have time to listen when you're out for a run. So thank you very much for listening. We will now uh, welcome to the stage Alex Capuro. Alex is the co-founder and CEO of Easy Payment Gateway, EPG. EPG is quite possibly the world's best online payment gateway. To tell you why, please welcome to the stage Alex Capuro. Good afternoon, everyone. Wow, there's a lot of people here. So it's becoming increasingly easier and easier for startups and SMBs to get online and get worldwide exposure. Through platforms such as Shopify or Magento, to name a couple, it's easier every day to get exposure to customers all over the world. But getting customers all over the world doesn't mean you're going to get an increase in revenue and in sales. In fact, around 30% 
of your transactions could be declined. And that's because you're not offering localized solutions. You need to offer solutions that your customers are used to, that they feel comfortable with, that they're safe with. That's going to increase your conversion, it's going to reduce your cost, and therefore increase your revenue in your sales. That's known as payment optimization. But how do you do that when there are hundreds of solutions out there, and new ones coming out on a monthly basis? And you're not payment experts, you're experts in your own business. So what do you do about this? The first option is to get an aggregated account. There are many PSPs out there that offer this type of solution. It's a quick integration, cost effective, and gives you access to many of the solutions you're going to need worldwide. And not just payments, but fraud prevention and KYC. But the problem with an aggregated account is that it's also a shared account. You're sharing this account with many other merchants, possibly hundreds of merchants. That means you're also going to share the risk, the exposure, and potentially the fraud that could have a negative impact on your business, even if it's not your fault. Think of an aggregated account as a GPS navigator in which you can enter a destination and it will give you a route, but you can't necessarily customize that route. You can't really change the waypoints because that route is also shared by many other merchants. So at Easy Payment Gateway, we thought a lot about this. How can we fix this problem? How can we offer a solution that's easy for merchants to integrate, like an aggregated account, but that also gives you the power and control over your payment needs, over your customer journey. And so after thinking about it a lot, we developed our own technology, which is now patented worldwide. In this next clip, you should see a quick video. And this technology allows you to simply draw on the screen a flow diagram by dragging icons, boxes, and connecting them with arrows. We, in less than four years, have integrated over 250 payment solutions for you so you don't have to. We've integrated over 30 credit card acquirers worldwide, so you, you don't have to. And by doing this, we can reduce your costs, reduce your decline rates, and increase your revenue. Remember, you can't just offer credit card for everyone all over the world. You need to offer localized solutions. We also give you access to over 15 years worth of experience. And in less than four years, we've processed over $5 billion worth of transactional data that we also give you access to. All done through one simple integration and one contract with Easy Payment Gateway. But we give you direct access to every single service we have, including also for prevention and KYC. Very simple, very effective. The future in payment processing is now. The future is Easy Payment Gateway. Thank you very much. The company is on a mission to save the world from climate change. Explaining how is the co-founder and CEO of Aklama, Davida Herzl. In 1968, the Apollo 8 astronauts were the first human beings to orbit the moon. Their mission, to map the far side of the lunar landscape. Taking 700 photographs, they gave view to something that human eyes had never laid eyes on. And a cold, stark, barren landscape came into view. And although we went to uncover this alien terrain, what we found was something entirely different, something new about ourselves. Because as that Apollo 8 spacecraft came over the lunar horizon, a blue living planet came into view, emerging against the darkness of space. And for the first time in human history, we saw ourselves, we saw the Earth as a human living, as a breathing living system. Today, the IPCC gives us less than 10 years to turn the tide on global temperatures to avert the crisis of global climate change. Those same emissions that are changing our climate are creating the, the, the most significant health epidemic of our time, with 93% of the world's children now breathing unhealthy air. This is at a cost of $6.4 trillion per year. My name is Davida Herzl, and I'm CEO and co-founder of Aklama, a company that I founded to help us address the global climate challenge. At Aklama, we like to say that, excuse me, at Aklama, we like to say 
that in order that you have to measure what you manage. We've been developing miniaturized pollution sensing technology that helps make climate measurement ubiquitous. We install these miniaturized sensors on fleets of vehicles that form an urban roving sensor network. And as these vehicles drive through city streets, we're taking real-time snapshots of, of multiple pollutants from GHGs to PM2.5. Our technology has been built by an interdisciplinary team of hardware and software engineers, data scientists, and atmospheric scientists to introduce disruptive innovation into a sector that has seen little innovation over the past several decades at a critical moment in history. We're also working with big global partners like Google. Um, we just announced in September that we're entering the next phase of our partnership with Google, instrumenting Street View vehicles to map the cities and streets where Google Street View drives. And in partnership with Google, we're generating, and our other fleet partners, we're generating a new view of ourselves that helps us understand pollution at the hyperlocal scale. And in doing so, unlocking multi multi billion dollar opportunities across industries to reduce emissions, reduce climate risk, and improve human health. Today, we're really excited uh, to be here and to share our mission with all of you. Thanks so much. Right. Last but certainly not least, engineer AI are making software accessible to everyone. Bringing ideas to life is the co-founder and CEO of engineer AI, Sachin Dev Dugal. Good afternoon, Lisbon. Today I am going to talk to you about how we built Builder. 24 million revenue in three years. Oh, sorry, 24 million revenue last year, built over three years, completely bootstrapped. So rather than pitching our company, what I thought would be tell you a little bit about how we did what we did and how we hustled our way here. So the first thing, and I'm sure many entrepreneurs here see it, is find a big enough problem. We've seen that last year, bespoke software was a half a trillion dollar industry. That means $550 billion was spent by small, medium companies building software. Roughly 78% of it was wasted. That's $429 billion. And we think the number of people who don't actually build an idea that they have, how many people have thought of an idea and didn't go ahead and build it? Hands up. That's a lot of people in the audience. And so find a big enough problem. And then I guess the second piece is hustle your cash. It's hustling. Hustle your cash. And so one of the most important things as a bootstrap company is to realize that you've got to make cash work for you. So negotiate like your life depends on it. We did that. Suppliers are your biggest source of funding and the best industry interest -free cash you'll get. And breathe your cash so that it never runs out. Watch over it. It's the most important thing that you'll ever have. It's game over if you have no money. And then finally, create scaling vectors. So what does this mean? Use things like artificial intelligence. Um, you know, it's, it, it's moving at an unprecedented pace. And the ability to use AI allows us to do things that otherwise weren't possible. We have an elastic supply of human capacity, 60% of all code. How many people use Facebook login on an app? How many people use more than one app with Facebook login? But every single developer rewrites that code again and again. We don't think that's right. And what we do is we have an assembly line that uses those frequent building blocks and allows, uh, allows people to save money on code that's already been written. And find recurring revenue. 40% of our revenue is recurring, and it's sticky like glue. And what we're going to show you very quickly is how this comes together. You have an online experience. You can say, I want to build an app. Video's not playing. Uh, so it'll come online. You'll say, I want to build an app. The app is like Uber, and it's for doctors. To get started, select what type of product you want. To and build. you have the ability have to the choose option. what you want. You have the ability to see different building blocks. Uh, you have the ability to choose where you want the team. 
you have the ability also to be able to uh, select uh, how fast you want it. And so you're really paying for things that help deliver that experience. So 60% of the code, you don't pay for. The elastic human capacity that's in 12 different time zones works whilst they're in between projects. This means we can ship custom software at one eighth of the price of our nearest competitor. We bootstrapped all this way. I would now like to introduce a British ambassador, Christopher Sainty. Thank you, Sachin. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I am here on behalf of the UK's International Trade Minister, Liam Fox, to endorse this truly remarkable startup, uh, Engineer AI, and its inspiring founder, Sachin Dougal. This is a brilliant AI uh, software business that was part of an initiative run by the British government's uh, Global Entrepreneur Program that assists startup companies around the world to scale up. More information about that at our stand in Pavilion 4. Sachin is one of 900 remarkable entrepreneurs who have invested in the UK since 2005, creating more than 5,000 quality jobs and raising more than a billion pounds of venture capital. This moment is about engineer AI and Sachin, and I'm going to end by congratulating them on their inspiring journey and achievement. Thank you. And then the most important thing in the last six seconds, find awesome investors. We're super proud to announce that we raised one of Europe's largest Series A investments for $30 million, having bootstrapped for three years. Thank you very much. Please come for celebrations at 3 p.m. Cool. Thank you.